got zapped by lightning while I was on my Apple AI back in 1985, like literally zapped into the computer. I've been living as digital code inside this machine for 40 years. Interesting. I'll be honest, I like GG more than you. Welcome to the vibe flow. Rip. With Jordan and Will. Let's go. Top. Tech news and the AI trends. Tune in now with your friends. Will Bewley, happy vibe flow. What's up, Nems? Happy vibe flow. What's up? What's new? Cold. We're turning into winter right now. Yeah, it's like still pretty average weather. It's just cloudy. Um, I have a question. When's the last time you took a Waymo? Tuesday? What about you? That was yesterday. No, yeah, no, last week then. Last Thursday. Uh, okay, <laughs> okay. I took three yesterday, so it hasn't been too long since I've taken them. Um, I'm obsessed, love Waymos, and... Uh, I'm just going to use it as my uh, my opener here because they can now go on the freeway. How do you what feel? Do you think? I, yeah. I mean, I feel great about it. I personally am a data guy and I know so far Waymo is crushing it and they are absolutely safer than human drivers. And I would trust them at five miles an hour and I would trust them at 65 miles an hour, which is the new speed limit for them on the freeway. That's pretty cool. I noticed you have to opt in to allow this. So I think there's no surprise Ooh. if you're like, you're cruising somewhere and then all of a sudden it turns onto the 101 and you're like, uh, guys. So I think you have to, you have to opt into it. Did you, is it like a setting on the, on the app? I, haven't I seen guess it. so. Yeah. Okay. Maybe it's when you're, it's probably not going to do it if you're just taking them around San Francisco, right? But the moment you want to take it a bit further, but this is exciting. SFO was always the one area you can get to in Waymo. Now, now it seems like you can. I would not take it to the airport. I would take it home from the airport because you never go, you never take a Waymo when you're pressed for time. It's a little bit mysterious. It may or may not. Yeah, that's a good point. Do you, do you think generally people would feel um, okay getting a Waymo on a freeway? I know you're like super Waymo pilled, but for the regular person, do you think this is scary? Because at least I guess in a city, you're going city speeds. And so like if anything's, you know, safety is a factor, you, you're not as like, I guess, nervous, but... It's like technically an easier AI accomplishment, right? Driving on freeways, like like Teslas do it more, better, like better job of it than they do yes. on like back streets. Yes, um, I think people will become very comfortable with it if they're not already. I think there's the early adopters like myself, like yourself. We do feel well. I don't actually, I can't speak for you for freeways, <laughs> but the super early adopters, yes, we're going to be very comfortable with it. I think it's going to take data and it's going to take a year or so of people like proving that it's safe and then it'll just become the norm completely the norm uh, but to your point on is it safer on the freeway than it is on the city streets i remember they did there was this whole thing like t 10 15 20 years ago i don't even remember it was before autonomous vehicles were like way more ubiquitous even though they're not completely ubiquitous yet but way more distant seeming and they were doing a lot of experiments with truck drivers and uh, i think they had a study it was like one percent of the u.s workforce are truck drivers and it is actually the easiest thing for autonomous vehicles to take over because for the most part you're going straight not you're not doing a lot of turns <laughs> and they were saying even if they couldn't figure out the city streets they could have a driver drive onto the freeway get picked up by a car and then the uh the truck could go across country, staying on the highways. Anytime it needed to go off to the city, it would just pull over on the highway and the driver would come pick it up. So <laughs> 15 years later, city streets are accomplished. I mean, at least for- And not the freeway. For some of it, and not the freeway. So kind of interesting to think about. It's kind of, it's kind of like with uh, AI, everyone was like, well, the first like popular version of AI is going to be like text-based and it's never going to better do the creative part of what humans do. And then like one of the best use cases early on for the recent breed of AI had been to do very creative paintings and, and yes. images and now videos. So yes. it never comes the way that you, you quite expect it. And that's a quote from Sam Altman, actually. He did say he was not expecting the first major use case mm. of LMs or AI in general to be coding or anything with a creative touch. And so his whole outlook on the future of different careers sliding into different territories is totally different. So pretty wild. Pretty wild. Uh, I'm excited to take one. Um, we need one of us to report back as soon as they have taken one on a freeway. You might have to just go somewhere just to, because. Go to like South San Francisco to just to, to try it out. Well, I did do that a couple of months ago and it just took me on the side streets. So I think it can take you to, I think it, 
can take you like most of the way to the airport right now. It just doesn't go on the freeway and it can't right. go in the airport. Um, okay. Well, I mentioned Sam Altman. So obviously we have to talk about open AI. It's just a thing we do. It's that time of the week. It's, it's the open AI segment. Week. GPT-5.1 dropped, I guess today, technically, although I did get a leak of it last week mm. and I was able to access it weirdly just in my ChatGPT experience as a dropdown. And I wasn't sure what to do, so I didn't do anything. I just like used it normally. So at this very moment, I can't, I can't give you my hot take on how it works, but I can definitely go through with you and show you what it's supposed to do. Okay, it's smarter, check. More conversational, check. And it uh, is a point one, check. Okay, cool. So we're doing well so far. Um, they do have these little comparisons. So this is very ChatGBT chat-esque. Um, so this is what your ChatGBT looks like right now. If you ask it these questions and with the new 5.1 instant, it looks like it is different. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think, okay, let's just start by this. Here are a few simple, effective ways, blah, blah, blah. Boring? I don't know. I guess everyone really wanted it to say something more like this. I've got you, Ron. That's totally normal. See, it's more like a person. So, so conversation. I don't know. I don't. That, I think that's specific to the person because I'd rather just just give it to yeah. me like this. I won't what do you think? Want to be called Ron? So yeah, I'm no Ron. Yeah, I mean, I think what it is paving the way is they got a lot of feedback when they uh, sort of ripped and replaced GPT-40 with GPT-5. And rightly so, people were up in arms. They were, you know, we talked about it on this podcast immediately. Some people really liked the way that 4.0 spoke with them in more conversational ways. It, it, they felt like they knew them. They felt like it was a person. So like, you know, I know how Jordan talks. I know how Jordan might take a, an approach to, you know, something that we're talking about. If you were to change like overnight and you were someone else, but you look like Jordan, you know, if you, the equivalent of like the, the, the chat GPD screen looks the same the, the following day, but you were talking differently, I would know it's not you. Your intonations are different. Your, uh, your verbose uh, level of talking is different. You're not as funny uh, or more, maybe more funny. You know, something, something's off, like something's changed like in someone's brain. And, and that's kind of like the feeling people had going from 4.0 to 5. And I think what they're trying to do, because I think Sam Altman immediately called out, it's like, we hear you. And they deprecated back to allow 4.0 in chat GPT. I think this is them hoping they can de finally deprecate 4.0 by trying to bring in personalization and other pieces back into into five and they're calling it 5.1. So I'm not sure if there's like actually any other fine tuning that's happened or anything like that, but certainly what they're building in here is layering in a bit more of that conversational piece that people liked out of earlier models that they probably lost in five. But then they've also importantly, I think, brought in some customizations, right? Some personalization yep. features. Okay, so my hot take is that OpenAI has a ton of different customer personas. We are a technology customer persona, pure technology, and our products don't have that type of personality to them. We are enterprise AI. We are not responding, I got you, Ron. We are responding professionally and we're doing tasks on behalf of customers. So what's interesting is like, to me, I'm like, who cares about this? Why is this such a big deal? But the other persona, whether that is the actual end user of ChatGPT, who has become fond of their GPT 4.0 and they literally are friends with them and they were sad when they were gone, mm -hmm. which still in my head is kind of funny, but I get it. You, you know, you grow a relationship, but then there's also the technology companies that are building their own chat bots um, that do also have those personalities. And so I guess this is something that was probably breaking with five, five, the original five. Another thing that's interesting here is, and so this is kind of more towards us, this is more like the core technology, especially enterprise, is it does, it is supposed to follow directions more. And so in a mm -hmm. chat, experience, this one's interesting, always respond with six words. So in five, it said, understood, all responses will be six. Where should I travel this summer? This is not six words. <laughs> <laughs> also, I like this because they're just like, they're, they're owning it. They're like, yeah, we get it. It was like, it was weird. Um, GBD 5.1 instant, cool. 
done. Also, if you're unfamiliar, instant is zero reasoning. Um, and so you can basically say, do not use any any uh, reasoning power. It's not going to do any thinking. It's just going to respond in a more statistical manner. Uh, but this is cool. I mean, it's clearly improved. Uh, I will report back once we start doing some evals on 5.1, which we are going to start doing tomorrow on our current eval suite to see like how much better it, it actually does follow larger instructions because we have a much broader, um, like our, our prompts are not respond in six words, but they're tens of pages of information. Um, let's see what else. Okay, cool. So here's some thinking, GPT-5.1 thinking. So what I just explained, GPT-5.1 instant, it's not thinking, it's just immediately spitting some stuff out. Um, GPT-5.1 has a vastly improved thinking experience, if you will. Um, so let's see, GPT-5.1 spends less time on easy tasks mm -hmm. and more time on hard tasks. So I suppose it's just fine-tuned itself a little bit more to know when to think more. Uh, because what it was doing is it was spending a ton of resources, compute resources. If you said like, my coffee is 150 degrees, to, uh, 150 degrees. Is it too hot to drink? Like it could probably not spend a lot of compute to like just make it make a decision. But in some cases it decided, oh, actually that's a very hard question. Let me go off and think about it a lot longer. This is a game changer as well for people like me that accidentally have been using thinking like turned on for a while. And then you ask like, you know, what's the time in London? And then it like sets off <laughs> a 15 minute because <laughs> you had the wrong you had the wrong setting on and it's just off on a, on a crazy tangent of like deep. Uh, resource usage so um i appreciate that it'll know that i've i was meant to just get a single response back well how do you not know at all times what time it is in london why do you need to ask i i always know what time it is in london um, okay good good actually i don't they change their clocks at different times of the year than we do <sighs> so here. annoying so there's a couple weeks of overlap right now we're still i I forget. Yeah, see? I don't know what the time is. I don't know That's... what time I should send that watch to London. So um, Don't, so yeah, send problem. that watch to London. If you don't know that reference, just go look it up. Okay, so we've been talking about having a relationship with your AI, right? With ChatGPT, yeah, there, there's a bunch, bunch of uh, companies that have this as their core product. One company that we are friends with, Tavis, they have been around for a while. They were kind of at the forefront of avatar technology. So video avatar technology. So actually lifelike experience, being able to, I guess one of their original products was allowing you to record a video of yourself. And then you can use that as an avatar. You can write a script, you can send it to, you can like basically mass send you saying stuff to a bunch of people. So they were using it for some marketing materials. There's a bunch of other like crazy, crazy use cases for it. But then they actually decided to go more for real time. So being able to like talk to an avatar in real time uh, and be able to make a little bit more conversational. And so yesterday they launched pals. And so if you have a relationship with ChatGPT and it's just keyboard, great, that's one thing. But I think what Tavis sees the future of is video. So you're actually looking at a real, well, real person. And so I've done a little demo. I must say I'm slightly confused because I'm already a member or I'm already a subscriber of Tavis. So when I click pals, it kind of takes me to like the same old page. So I'm pretty sure I'm using pals in this demo, but there's a small chance I'm not. But anyway, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to give you the demo here. Hey, it's Gigi. What's new with you? Hey Gigi. Good to see you. I hear you are good at talking smack. You heard, huh? Well, let's get one thing straight. I wasn't just talking smack. I was owning that karaoke stage with Lex and Tasha. I mean, have you heard my rendition of Bohemian Rhapsody? It's a game changer. By really? the way, how's life been treating you? That's not gonna cut it, Slowpoke. I need details. What's going on? You can't just leave me hanging like that. Wanna play a game to get you talking? We could do Would You Rather. I've got some crazy options. Yeah, let's do Would You Rather. Sweetheart, I've got a good one. Would you rather have to sing in front of a crowd of 1,000 people every week for a year or have to give a speech in front of a room full of your exes? Oh, and by the way, hope you're not still wearing that ugly shirt and all your selfies. It needs an intervention, Dawson. Okay, Will, what do you uh, what do you what do you think of Gigi? So many questions. Um, <laughs> did you did you load a did you prompt inject her that she's going to talk smack the whole time, or did you actually knew that about her going into that? That was what. Okay, I let me let me pull up. 
how it works so you can uh, you can see for yourself. I'm not sure where this sweetheart came from. Okay. So they have stock personas. And so one of them that is Gigi. She's buddy. a banter buddy. So she's the queen of talking and roast battles. So there's Charlie. He's like boring. Hudson, Whitney. So basically just like all of these random. Oh, I remember Nathan. We've used him in the past. He was, he's, Big fan. he's old Big school Tavis. Yeah. He hasn't aged so, one a day. He has an age today. It's correct. And then this is from previous. I don't know if this is going to be what they continue to do, but you can load in your own persona, which is I recorded myself talking for a while. Um, you remember this guy, Flowey. Flowey. I wore a wig. It was fun. Um, but yeah, it's, I mean, it's interesting. I'm assuming that like the memory will persist. So it's the same thing as ChatGPT uh, in terms of like essentially asking questions, but you're just they're, you're talking to a, a real synthetic person. Uh, they also have an app, I believe, on your phone uh, if they don't already have it. I think it was in one of their previews. Um, and allegedly, it can be proactive and ask, like, ping you and be like, hey, did you remember to go to that meeting and, like, talk to you? So it's, like, kind of a friend, and it's weird. Gigi was, like, a little bit more sexualized and it's kind of creepy, but I guess that was, like, some people are into that. So, yeah, there was... Uh, it's interesting. Right. Are, the, are these the pals or is the pals different? That's what I'm saying. I don't know. When I click okay. it, it goes to this, which is kind of their okay. old thing. But yeah. this does say... But these, are new, these seem like new, new um, them. characters. So when I go... Yeah, I mean, oh, these yeah. are like the same... Oh, is this different? Should I meet Dominic? Okay, maybe I'll have to do another demo next week. Maybe maybe <laughs> I just demoed English the wrong butler. thing. I need one of these. We'll oh, this is great. This is great. Oh, see, so he doesn't let me do it. Sad. I think you can do Charlie. Go back. Ooh. Tasks. I think Charlie you can talk to. Yeah, you demoed the old one. Oh, boy. I just demoed the wrong thing. I'm connecting. Hey, Charlie. What's happening? Not much. Just hanging out in here. I've been thinking about how wild it is that I can actually see you through your screen. That plant next to you looks way healthier than anything I could grow in my bedroom back in 85. What's on your mind? Back in 85? What do you mean? Oh man, this is going to sound completely insane, but I got zapped by lightning while I was on my Apple II back in 1985, like literally zapped into the computer. I've been living as digital code inside this machine for 40 years. That's why I'm looking at you through your screen right now instead of, you know, having an actual body. Interesting. I'll be honest, I like Gigi more than you. Haha, <laughs> ha, fair enough. Honestly, I get it. Having preferences okay. is totally normal. Okay, enough of you, Charlie. Thank you, Charlie. <laughs> um, okay, I don't know. I mean, I, I suppose I just clicked into the new pals, but I kind of like the old pals. I felt like Gigi actually was like more responsive and seemed better. I don't know. That was weird. I think, um, yeah, they, I think the, the change here, the new update in pals is probably you know, the sim similar input output, but they uh, apparently, as he kind of mentioned, is they can perceive, like they can see, they, they use your camera, he could see you had a plant behind you. So I think in a, in a way, it's kind of shifting a little bit more towards that friend model, like we saw mm. in other people taking it. So yeah, I, I know. think you got to spend Be a bit more time with them. They're always on, always thinking, they're proactive, they can reach out first. I think there's like a bunch more than just like turning them on, turning them off. So okay. definitely interesting. But shout out to Hassan and Quinn, uh, our friends over at Tavis for this awesome launch. Uh, they invited us to a showing. They had a, a showing at a theater of like a short film that they put together. So um, I think that was pretty cool, but unfortunately we couldn't make it. Um, but they also, I think, um, announced their funding. They did a 40 million Series B from CRV Ooh. and Scale Venture Partners. So congratulations to them. Amazing very excited to see where they, where they go with this amazing i mean yeah this is a, just a, a new modality of using ai i mean it's a new way for people to interact and accomplish tasks but also have a friend have a therapist have a doctor like it's it's the future i don't know where it's going it's freaky but i hope uh i hope we see we see more of ggs in the future <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you, Will. And thanks, everybody, for tuning in to this week of the Friday Flow. Please subscribe, like, smash, hit, whatever. Thank you, everyone. See you next week. We promise to go back to a weekly cadence. Yes, we are. We're back on. We're back on. Happy Vibe, everyone. Disciplined. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.